Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Daniela and if you're new here, I make up cycling videos and also some basic tutorials for sewing. In this video, I will be showing you how did I make this skirt and a top with corset back using the leftover fabric of the sari that I had upcycled previously. The original pattern that I have drafted is for a dress but since I didn't have enough fabric, I made a skirt and a top. In case you want to make a dress, you can still continue and follow this pattern. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Now without any further delay, let's get into the video. Okay, so we will be using our basic bodice and I have attached some extra paper at the bottom based on the length of the dress that you want. Then go ahead and extend the dart line like this. And then add a little curve here. We are going to add this curve on both the sides of the dart, but we will start with one side first. Once you are done with one side, do the same thing on the other side as well. For the flare, we will also be extending the other side of the dart, but that will be done later. Okay? Then we need to also extend this line in a slant way, in a sloped way. For this, we need to add some paper here. So I'll go ahead and add some paper so that I can go ahead and extend this line. Here I am just measuring what is the width of the paper that is required to extend the line and I am just going to add that much of paper. You can add extra paper and then just extend the line like this. And since the paper is on fold, make sure that you are attaching the extra paper on both front and the back part. Attach it with a paper tape. Once that is done, we have to go ahead and mark the neckline. I will mark a point 3 inch above my bust point and then draw a horizontal line. Now on this horizontal line, mark a point at 5 inches and come half inch down on this line and then join them with a curve like this. This is going to be your armhole curve. And then come half inch down on the neckline and draw a neckline like this. Then we will just go ahead and cut the outer side of the pattern. Once you have done it, it will look like this. And now just extend this dart line straight upwards and just label it as front because your front and back will look almost the same. Now for the back, you know that only the armhole is different but we don't have armhole. So the next thing that is going to be different is going to be a dart start point and the end point. So to draw the darts, you need to extend all these lines which are your waistline, hip line and then create your darts, mark your darts. You know your darts start 1 inch below the upper bust line and ends 2 inch before the hip line. You know how the darts are created, I have explained everything. In my basic bodice tutorial, make sure you check that out. Now just like the front, how you have extended one dart, you have to extend similar way for the back as well. Okay, you can see I am extending the dart which is towards the folded side. Then go ahead and cut it. See how am I cutting it? Cut it in the exact same way. Don't cut the other side of the dart because we will be needing it. So don't cut it. Keep it. I will also be separating my front and the back part. So before you do that, make sure that you have labeled your front and your back pattern as front and back. Okay, because they are going to look exactly the same. I will add similar curves as I have added for the front dart to the back darts. Okay, like this. Also, it's good to mark the side which will be on fold as fold because again, your patterns are going to look exactly same. So make sure that you label them correctly. Now it's time to extend the other dart. Okay, we have extended one side of the dart. Now you have to extend the other side of the dart. For that, you need to add paper again here because you don't have enough paper for the slant line which you will be drawing. You can see how I have kept the scale. You have to do exactly same. 
attach the paper with paper tape and then go ahead and extend the other side of the dart like this. Once that is done, go ahead and cut it. Now this time you can go ahead and cut the dart because it's not needed anymore. So once you have cut it, your front pattern will look like this. Now I always say that your hip line is a curve. It's never the straight line, but I forgot to add that curve between your waist and your hip. So I need to go ahead and add that. So I'll mark the midpoint of my width to hip measurement and then come half inch outwards and then draw a curve like this. Now this curve needs to be extended till the bottom. Okay, not like this. So I will again add some paper till the bottom and then extend that curve till the bottom. Okay, so this is how your lines should look like. So now just go ahead and cut it. You have to do the exact same procedure for your back pattern as well, extending the dart and also adding the curve to your hip line. Okay, once you do that, your front and the back pattern is ready. And as I said, there is not a lot of difference in them. Now in case you are wondering why one of the part looks so small in flare and the other one looks so big, the smaller one is on fold. So whatever is the measurement, it will be the double of it. Okay, then it will look fine. Don't worry about that. Now since I don't have enough fabric, what I have done is I have folded my pattern from the waistline. So I will be making a skirt top because I don't have enough fabric. Okay, you can see this is how I have cut it. I have folded it till the waistline. Okay, now I need to also cut the upper part, right, till the waistline. So I will go ahead and cut it. The folded part should be cut on fold and the other part you have to cut it normally. For the back, since our back will be a corset back pattern, I will only cut the fabric for one part. The folded part is not needed. So once you have cut the main fabric pieces, also make sure that you have to cut the lining fabric for the seam. Okay, so go ahead and cut the lining fabric as well. Now once you have cut it, keep them on side by side. Remove all the pins and open the folded sides. And then keep the main fabric as well as the lining fabric in order of how you will be stitching them. So side by side of how you will be stitching them. So you can see this is the folded side, then I'll take one of the front pattern and I will keep it side by side. Do the same thing for the lining fabric as well. And then just go ahead and pin it. Do it for the lining fabric as well. Once that is done, you also have the back pattern pieces. So take that and also keep it on the sides exactly how it is going to be attached like this. And then just go ahead and pin it. Make sure when you are pinning it, right sides are facing each other. Now for the sleeves, what you have to do is you have to take two squares. You can see there are two squares. And then fold it twice like this. Now this is for both the sleeves. Okay. So what I will do is I've, I have folded it into four parts. Then whatever is the length of the sleeve that you need. Just go ahead and mark that point. I am marking a point at 7.5 inches and then I will just go ahead and make a circle like this. Once you have marked all the points, just connect them using a curve. Then you can go ahead and cut it by keeping some seam allowance. Just make sure that you will have a marking on the folded side. Like this. Okay. And then just connect those points with a line. Okay, like this. Now 
Now do the similar thing with smaller measurement in case you want two sleeves. So here I am doing the markings at five and a half inches. Do the same procedure as you did for the other one. And then just cut it with some seam allowance. Now later I lost both of these sleeves so I had to create different ones but I created them using this same method. And I had fabric left only for one single sleeve so that's why in my pattern you will see only one sleeve not two. But I will add it on the screen how two sleeves will look like in case you are planning to add two sleeves. You can see I have marked a plus sign here. Now you have to keep the plus sign on top of each other so they will be aligned okay like this. Pin it so that it will be in place okay this should not move so make sure that you will pin it. Now you need to measure the armhole okay for that take your pattern also take the shoulder part okay and now we will just go ahead and measure it. So from the shoulder slope till the upper bust line into two because the front and the back part you can see I am keeping the pattern like this so basically it was like this before I cut it. Now measure this distance into two okay because front and the back part and this curve for the front and the back add all those measurements together and that is going to be your armhole curve measurement now divide that measurement by six and mark that point okay now you have to create a circle like this using that measurement your circle should touch the cross line or the plus sign whatever you want to call it so create that circle and then go ahead and cut it but while cutting make sure that you are keeping some seam allowance okay so you can see I'm not cutting on the circle that I have drawn but I am cutting with some seam allowance now once this is done your sleeves are ready Now your bodice will look like this after you have stitched the pieces together. Okay, you have to do the same thing for the lining fabric as well and it will look like this. Now if you can see, I have pressed the seam open. Okay, now to attach the sleeves you have to follow this procedure. The small part will come below the armhole and the longer part will come over your armhole. Okay, so this should match like this so you have to attach them like this on the main fabric okay on the right sides so like this i didn't attach the sleeve back then because i was not sure about how i wanted and which type of sleeves i wanted so i did not attach but in case you want you have to attach them like this so it will look like this pin it and turn it on the right sides before you go and stitch to see if it is attached correctly okay do it on the other side as well and once you have stitched it take your lining fabric put the right sides facing each other in case you want to add straps you have to attach straps like this then pin the lining fabric and the main fabric and then go ahead and stitch it once you have stitched it add some notches so that it will be easier for you to flip it okay so once you have flipped it it will look like this then go ahead and top stitch it then take a rectangle and add fusible interfacing to it. So we will be keeping it like this. Now we need 10 small straps of 2 inch long and you will be folding it and keeping it like this. Okay. See how am I doing it? It should be like this. So you have to attach it like this. So that when you will flip it on the right side, it will be correct. So go ahead and pin it on the right side. You can see how I have pinned it. You have to pin it in the same way. And then stitch it once that is done take your rectangle and now go ahead and stitch it with the rectangle like this this rectangle is just to make sure that your fabric is strong so that when we are adding the boning the fabric will be strong enough for it okay so once you have done it go ahead and stitch it once you have stitched it it will look like this remove the corner parts so that you will get a nice finishing on the corners as well when you turn it 
so once you have turned it it will look like this you can see that these loops are also looking fine and then go ahead and top stitch it after you have top stitched it stitch two parallel lines to make a channel for your boning okay you can see how i have done it you have to do the exact same thing then take your boning i am using plastic boning measure the length of the side and remove half inch from the bottom because that will go in seam allowance and then cut it but we are not directly going to add it we are going to attach paper tape at the end so that the end won't be that sharp okay you can see how i am doing it you have to do the exact same thing also the exact same procedure you have to follow on the other side of the corset as well once you have done it just insert your boning once that is done it will look like this you will also have straps or sleeves in case you have attached them now for the bottom part i have already attached the front pieces together and the back pieces together now i will keep them on right sides facing each other and stitch on one side on the other side i will add a zip do the same thing for the lining fabric as well stitch on one side keep the other side open which will be the zip side once you have done it if you want it to be a dress you can attach your bottom part with the top bodice and make a dress but i am going to keep it as a skirt top okay you can attach it like this if you want but i am going to make it a skirt so i'll take the lining fabric and the main fabric and i will keep them in such a way that right sides will face each other okay for stitching so you can see i have kept the skirt and then i am keeping the right side of the lining fabric on top of my skirt right side and then i will go ahead and pin it pin the whole waistline and once that is done flip your skirt on the right sides to see if you have pinned the pieces correctly now i have flipped it on the right sides it looks like this so it is fine then go ahead and stitch it if you want you can add some notches or even if you don't add notches it's fine because it's not a curve it's just a straight horizontal line so it's fine if you don't add notches then go ahead and flip it also make sure that you will iron this skirt so that the finishing around the waist will look nice also top stitch it top stitching will make sure that your lining fabric will not be visible when you wear the skirt from the top so you can see i have top stitched it not sure if you can see but i have top stitched it now we will go ahead and do the finishing of the zip side area okay so you can see how am i folding this lining fabric and then i will hold it from the inside just so that i will have a idea how i should be stitching it okay and then i will fold it on the wrong side so now you can see i will just go ahead and pin it so basically this is how i need to stitch it okay so now i will go ahead and pin the main fabric with the lining fabric till the zip ends you have to do the similar thing on the other side as well and once you have pinned it take it to the sewing machine and stitch it only stitch it till the zip part so once you have stitched it it will look like this okay now i will flip it on the right side and you can see this is how it looks 
so the wrong side of the lining fabric is not at all visible even on the inside part of the skirt now you need to go ahead and stitch the bottom part from where the zip ends till the bottom part once that is done fold the lining part twice for the finishing okay so you can see how i have folded it twice and then pin it repeat the procedure for the whole skirt and this is for the finishing okay you have to do the similar process for the main fabric as well and once you have done this give it a good press and your skirt is ready for the finishing of the bodice i have taken this long strap of 2 inch width and i'm going to attach it like this okay you can see it's on the right side that i'm attaching attach it like this and stitch it once you have stitched it you have to fold it like this okay and pin it repeat this procedure for the whole bottom part of the bodice if you want to keep the bottom fabric visible you can still keep it visible like how we do it for the bias binding or you can make it completely invisible like how i am doing it and once you have stitched it it will look like this